Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is the Circle Python weekly meeting for Monday, October 24th, 2022. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designs around on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. Um, this meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord ser server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord, where you'll get a Discord invite to the group. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. There are a lot of U.S. holidays on Mondays. So we usually push it to Tuesday. In the notes doc, there's a note to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send invitations, notifica notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a Google Notes doc that accompanies this meeting and recording. The notes document contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, uh, so that having the timestamps lets you skip around. After each meeting, we post the link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. And in particular, we pin that uh, post to the pinned messages in that channel. So you can always go to the pin and find a link to the latest Google Doc. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the notes doc for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held five in five parts. The first is community no news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python or microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project separate from what we're all up to. Um, third part is hug reports. Uh, Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an update is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And finally, the fifth part is In the Weeds, which is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions might come out of something mentioned in status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. So that's how the meeting will go. Um, I will now start um, with community news. Uh, and I'll read it. There's some stuff from uh, the newsletter, which, which just came out. and um, I also added one new thing, which will be in the newsletter, but is not yet. It's not in the draft. Okay, so um, CircuitPython 8.0 Beta 3 was released. Um, it is relatively stable, but there will be further additions and fixes before the final release. Uh, note that ESP32 C3 boards have not been functional since 8.0 Beta 2. So for those, use the absolute latest or use 8.0 Beta 1. And I'll just note that I expect to do a beta for this week, like maybe in the next day or two. Um, Python 3.11 is uh, has its general release today. There's a live stream on YouTube right now that's happening. Uh, for some reason, there aren't like precursors to that on the python.org website, but this will definitely be mentioned in the newsletter. It just was not there was it was not so clear that it was coming today, but I got pinged in the Python Discord about it, so I put that in. Um, the Red Monk Programming Language Survey, which is a different, there are several different surveys of programming language usage. Uh, this one um, has Python at the number two spot after JavaScript. There's a link to the results in the notes doc. Oh, there you go, there's a graph. 
somebody's posted. Thank you. Um, so just to follow up on uh, where this news comes from, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter, the CircuitPython community-run newsletter that's emailed every Tuesday. Anne is our editor, uh, illustrious editor, does a fantastic job collecting things. Uh, the archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute to this newsletter by submitting a pull request in GitHub. There are links in the notes doc. Or you can tag uh, us with a tweet, uh, hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter, or email cpnews at adafruit.com. Any of those ways are great for sending uh, things to the newsletter. So now we'll, um, I'll take a timestamp. And we'll move on to the state of CircuitPython and libraries in Blinka. As I mentioned, this is a quantitative overview. Um, so overall, and everything we've in the past week, this is up to like Sunday night, uh, we've had 34 poll requests merged by 18 authors, uh, notably some authors I have not recognized before, Zani Whoop, Atalantor, uh, maybe TWA 127, and BMAL 118. Uh, thank you for your contributions, everyone, especially the new people who are on board. There were eight reviewers of these 34 pull requests, and overall there were 37 issues closed by nine people and 16 opened by 13 people. And a bunch of issues have, were assigned the Oktoberfest lab, label earlier in the month, so that there are new new assignments here. But if you have, if you're interested in contributing and earning. Um, uh, Hectoberfest uh, brownie points, which are good toward a shirt or a tree planted in your name. Uh, look for the label. Look for those that things. Those issues that are labeled with Hectoberfest. Um, so, I could read the core, but Jeff, would you like to read the core since I'm reading everything else? Happy to. So, um, and I was just going to add about. Hectoberfest, almost any accepted pull request in a CircuitPython-related repo is going to get you credits. Um, Hectoberfest label we applied to things that we think are more suited to a beginner. But uh, pick up any issue or just pick up a pull request of your own devising. Anyway, but on to the core, uh, which is the part of CircuitPython implemented in C. You typically load it via a UF2 file. We had 23 pull requests merged from 10 authors and 5 reviewers. And uh, I just want to recognize again Atlan Tori and uh, not a new contributor, but a more recent contributor, Bill88T. Uh, thank you all for your contributions and thanks to our 5 reviewers. Uh, outside of the Adafruit organization, that's uh, really just microdev this time around. So uh, we really appreciate that. In terms of pull requests, we have 13 open pull requests. Uh, a good Half of them are open over 60 days. Um, we think that we're waiting on activity from somebody else. But if you need something from us, please don't hesitate to comment or ping on those pull requests. And then as far as new requests, we have them coming in at a fairly good clip. We've got some open anywhere from 0 to 37 days on the lower end of the spectrum. Issues-wise, we went down on issues with 28 closed by 6 people and 8 opened by 7 people. We've got 561 open issues, but in the core we manage those by milestones, which are all about what Adafruit is prioritizing uh, as far as development. And so before the 8.0.0 stable release, we have 26 open issues we would like to resolve. And uh, during the 8xx release cycle of stable releases, we have a further 12 issues that we would like to resolve. Uh, there are three issues not assigned a milestone, so Dan or I will go through and just uh, quickly do a gut check and assign those to one of those milestones. Um, so as Dan was talking about, we continue to move toward the stable release of 8, but there is a lot more to do. I think this may be a record number of beta releases. Uh, it's certainly a lot to go to four beta releases. Uh, but we're going to continue to work on those open issues. We welcome anyone in the community working on those with us. And uh, we just want to make 8 a great release. We've got support for lots of new hardware for the web workflow. We really need you to check it out and kick the tires if you don't mind trying out beta software. And um, 
yeah, the focus remains moving towards a stable release, and that's what I've got for the core. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And I would just note, um, a lot of issues were closed. I went through some of the long-term issues and found a bunch that were stale, or I decided that we would never do, but mostly they were stale, or they had already actually already been fixed, but not closed. So that's why there are so many that's partly why so many more were closed than open. Usually it's kind of a steady state. But we're long-term issues going below 500 has not happened for a while. I'm sure it will go back up again. Okay, uh, let's move on to the library section. And Katni, could you do that? Yep, absolutely. The section re refers to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is anything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras such as our community bundle and our cookie cutter. Uh, over all of these repos uh, for the last week, we had eight pull requests merged by six authors and four reviewers. The oldest pull request merge was 77 days old, so I'm glad we're still getting through some older ones. Um, the rest were 10 days or less. We currently have 31 open pull requests. We had seven closed issues by five people and eight opened by eight people, uh, leaving us with 573 open issues. 106 of those are labeled good first issue, as well as Hacktoberfest at the moment. Um, and if you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including all the open pull requests, um, all the open issues, and uh, the issues you can search by label. So if you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out that list. Good first issue is a great place to start if you have never done anything. Um, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you have the hardware, test something. If you don't, take a look at the code, let us know what you think, and uh, leave a comment. And that's a great way to get started. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had no new libraries, but a series of updated libraries that I will not read off, but they are available in the notes. And that's what I've got. Okay, thank you, Katni. Okay, next up is our Blinker report. Uh, Maker Melissa is not here today, so I'll read that. Um, Blinker is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython and single board computers like uh, Raspberry Pi running Linux. So it is a library that lets you use CircuitPython code but running uh, with CPython, that is the sort of the standard regular Python. Um, so in the past week, there were three pull requests merged by three authors. There was one reviewer. There are six open pull requests. Some of them are really old, some of them are not. Um, two issues were closed by one person and no new issues were opened. Um, there are right now 82 open issues in the Adafruit Blinka library. And there are currently 98 boards supported, so we're getting really close to having 100 uh, of these single board computers supported uh, under Blinka, which, will be, which is, will be great when we get there. So watch for that. All right. So now I'll move on to Hug, Re Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, but have hug reports in the notes document, I'll read them off as I get to you in the list. Okie dokie. Um, so uh, I'll start. Um, I'd like to thank MicroDev and Jeff for um, insights into what the problem we had with the ESP32C3 builds not working at all. It turned out, um, well, I'll talk about that in status about what the problem was. Uh, I'd like to thank Scott Tanut, who is on a uh, parental leave right now, but um, is working on some projects at home, I think, and encountered an issue for one of his own projects, and he actually uh, contributed a fix. Uh, I, I was expecting to say, you know, don't, you don't have to do, I was going to say, don't, you don't have to do that, but if he's having fun, that's fine. And thanks to Jeff for continued additions to the PicoW support in the past week. It's now getting even better, and people are using it for all kinds of useful stuff right now. Uh, next up is C. Grover, who's text only. Uh, C. Grover thanks Tectric for continuing support with community bundle submittals. 
Uh, thanks to Todd Bot and DJ Devon3 for amazing CircuitPython eyeballs just in time for the pumpkins. Thanks to DJ Devon3 for heads down work to sort out the APIs for their social media counter project. And thanks to Todd Bot and Paul Kettler for an interesting The Bootloader podcast today. Thanks for the editor advice. All right, and next up is DJ Devon. I would like to send a hug to PR Cutler and Jepler for their uh, PR guidance. I was trying to submit a PR and they literally walked me through it. It was, thanks guys, that, that, that honestly really helped. Uh, to Blitz City DIY for the Twitter auth header API example. I know I mentioned that last week, but I was it still took me like two weeks to get through all of it. And because of the one example, I was able to just stroll right through all the rest of the APIs. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to, or a hugged report, I should say, to Jason Crack Developers for creating a wonderful VS Code extension that helped cut down my time swimming through thousands of lines of JSON with a neat visualizer tool I can definitely recommend to anyone working with large JSON dumps. And to Jepler, who said, hold my beer as he answered the question, can a Feather S3 run Doom? Okay, thank you, DJ Devin Thie. Uh, next up, Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, this week, uh, Hug Reports, uh, thank you to Jeff uh, for all the improvements in Pico W, but in particular, uh, fixed an issue that I found uh, just a few days prior. Um, so that was really cool to see that already working again. Uh, thank you to Dan uh, for continuing with all the beta releases and getting all of these new fixed versions and improvements out. Uh, Hug Report, uh, thank you to Liz for joining the rotation to host this meeting. Uh, definitely echoing what Dan said. It's uh, really nice to get more and more folks doing it. Uh, and then a group hug to everybody. Thanks. OK, thanks. OK, next up, Jeff. Hello. So I wanted to thank you, DJ Devin, for being ready to learn more about GitHub and pull requests. To Katni, thanks for that long chat last week. We had plenty to catch up on. Marco Dev, thank you for working on Coproc. I've been kicking the tires. Um, more on that in my status updates. To Bill88T, thanks for picking up access mode access point mode on the PyCal, and to Lady Ada and PT for recognition of my work on the PyCal project. Uh, yeah, and that's what I've got for Hug Reports. All right, thank you. Okay, next up, Cadney. Hello. So I want to give a Hug Report to Liz for joining the meeting host rotation, to Bruce for beginning steps to also join the meeting host rotation, to Jeff for a lovely chat, to Dan for all the release work, to Tammy makes things for a wonderful chat as well. To Tectric for a meeting with me this evening. Uh, so I haven't done this yet, but early hug report to talk about a library CI uh, PR that changes uh, how the library CI works, um, possibly for the better. Um, to Phil and Lamore for being understanding of me struggling mentally with COVID recovery and allowing me to focus on one major thing at a time. Um, my list of things that I have to do is very overwhelming and uh, Lamore was very specific that I should focus on one thing at a time, and it was a big relief. Um, and a group hug. Okay, thank you, Katni. All right, next up is Liz. Hello, sorry. Um, hug report to Katni for reaching out to ask if I'd be interested in hosting a CircuitPython meeting from time to time. Uh, to prep for that, today I'm running a local recording, make sure I have all the technical things set up properly, uh, and a group hug. OK, thank you. It's also known as Blitz City DIY in Discord. OK, uh, next up is Mark Gambler, who's not here because he's getting a vaccine booster. It says, uh, thanks to PT for starting Ask an Engineer with my eye video. It was cool to see it there. And a group hug. After spending time back in Arduino world, there was so much I miss about CircuitPython. So good job to everyone. OK, thank you. All right. Uh, next is Paul Cutler, who's here. Thanks, Dan. I've got a hug report for Tectric for the thorough pull request review. And it's really thorough, and I appreciated it. And a group hug. All right. Thank you. And next up is uh, Tammy Makes Things, who's not in the meeting right now, so I'll read theirs. Thanks to Kentney for a great conversation this week and a group hug. And then finally, I'll also read uh, Tectrix. 
Uh, thanks to everyone here for teaching me about embedded systems. It helps secure a fantastic store, uh, score on my grad course's bid term. And a group hug. All right, that's great. All right. Uh, next up is status updates. Um, this is a chance for us to sync up with each other on what we're doing. I'll start and we'll go through the list alphabetically as before. Uh, you can, when I call on you, you'll take a few minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you're planning to do until the next meeting. It's also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If you like to discuss something in more detail, we can, we can always move it to in the weeds. And also, if you have some non-CircuitPython thing that still is of interest or is occupying your time or mental space, uh, let us know if you'd like. OK. I'll start. Um, I spent several days uh, last week working on a problem that caused the ESP32 C3 builds not to work at all. I narrowed it down to an update in the GCC tool chain. The tool chain means all the programs associated with compiling and linking and producing a binary and that kind of thing for um, a particular architecture. Uh, there was like a what seemed to be a minor update, but it caused it not the builds not to work at all. And kind of a, a group effort with Jeff and Microdev, uh, we figured out that the problem was that they had changed the default architecture. The ESP32 C3 is a RISC-V chip, and there are several many variants on that. And they had changed the default variant to one with floating point, and it was, uh, that apparently caused the builds to break. So we, uh, Jeff and Microdev kind of jointly figured out what was going on here in terms of the architecture. And then we made a change, and that fixed that. So um, I didn't, this, this fix was not ready in time for 800 beta 3, but because we have these broken boards, I'd like to release uh, beta 4 really soon to at least get these boards working again and there'll be some other minor fixes. Um, another thing I did was to add uh, documentation on limitations about various features and modules in CircuitPython. So these, this information, I was, was originally going to be a page in the Welcome to CircuitPython guide, but instead I've distributed it to the FAC in the Welcome to CircuitPython guide, and then various board guides, so that, for instance, the ESP32 S3 boards have some, like, Danger Will Robinson kind of stuff in them about what is working and what is not working. And also uh, various modules in the Read the Docs mo documentation uh, will say like, okay, on this board, this doesn't work or these boards don't support, don't have a DAC, so there's no analog out, that kind of thing. So I hope this will be helpful and will reduce the support load on everyone. And after doing all that, I'm back to fixing issues on 8.0.0. I'm working on some sleep issues right now. OK, that was a little long. Uh, let's go ahead with C. Grovers, who's also text only, who's text only today. Uh, submitted four more helpers to the, community circuit, to the community bundle, working on three or four more before putting a fork in this activity and moving on to other projects. And that is a not a GitHub fork. OK, Git fork. Uh, working on an approach to generalize the adaptive low-pass filter used in the Shadow Watcher light sensor gesture detector class. That is a lot of adjectives. Would be useful for noisy real-time sensor projects. This weekend was the annual rain gutter cleaning ritual. The two-story extension for the leaf blower that I picked up at a clearance sale made it easy to clear the gutters from the ground. The drawback is getting covered in debris as you look up to position the nozzle. It's a rite of passage, I guess. Okay. I can just visualize that. All right, next up is David Glode. I tested beta 3 on a few devices, especially Pico W, hugged the Dan and Jepler, did some flip clock test and PR, hugged the Foamy Guy, Tetric, maybe others, and acquired two Trinket M0s, two Cutie Pie RP2040s, and two uh, Zhao uh, RP2040s for future AT maker use, USB host tricks. Okay, next up is DJ Devon 3. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, I submitted detailed feedback on the new user pages where multiple features were broken in Chrome and Firefox, and 
the Adafruit folks have fixed that, so now user pages are fully working in all browsers. Uh, I finished my seven-segment social media counter project. It uses four separate APIs in one script, which is pretty long, but the uh, ESP32-S2 handles it like a champ. Uh, I pushed a PR to the Adafruit request library to have them included as separate API examples and not just one long script. I split them apart and ensured every API, API was working separately, then pushed a PR. They're all waiting to be reviewed by some brave soul who must have a developer API account for each one of those sites to test and confirm that they're good to go through the PR. Uh, so good luck to whoever does that. And you have to like APIs. Uh, I put the finishing touches on the NeoPixel goggle kit, recut the mirror lenses so they're not uh, so bubbly around the edges anymore, and I accomplished my goal of making them a real wearable with slightly better aesthetics thanks to the mirror film. Started on a pumpkin for the DigiKey Hack a, Hack a Pumpkin Challenge uh, tonight, which ends this Thursday, so for anybody else that's interested in participating in that, that ends this Thursday. I will be using my non-existent carving skills to gouge some lines for a couple of nudes. Since Anne went with a Space Coast theme for her Halloween project, I'll be responding with a Treasure Coast theme pumpkin. Uh, for those that don't know Florida geography that well, the Space Coast and the Treasure Coast are regional neighbors. Uh, turn Toddbot's QT eyes into alligator eyes for my Halloween dragon mask uh, that I'll be using to hand out candy this year. Um... Uh, because Halloween projects and Hacktoberfest have deadlines, I put off working on all of my other stuff until, you know, after Halloween, as probably most people are. And that's all I got. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, last week, I submitted a PR in the HTTP server library to make it return smaller chunks to work around an issue that we noticed on the Pico W. Uh, I tested the fix uh, inside the core for that actual issue, so we can also return larger chunks now as well. Um, I built a display.io version of the trivia game. I've been working on a few different variations of this game using a, a free trivia API, so I built the display.io one. Uh, it's using a small 1.8 inch display and a one by four uh, Neo key as the input. Uh, the game is fully functional. You can uh, The player can select a category, select how many questions, and go through and answer the questions, and it will keep track of score. And it will let you play again when you have completed the game. Uh, in order to work on the category portion of that, I kind of um, extended a previously created list select widget to make it possible to scroll through lists that are too big to fit on the display. So it used to allow you to scroll through a list and you had to have everything on the display um, and now you can actually set how many you want to show so you can scroll through an arbitrarily long list um, and let the user select a thing from it which is exactly what i needed to choose the categories uh, this week i've been doing some uh, library pr reviews and testing this morning um, i will be working on a different version of that trivia ui on a bigger screen uh, i got a 2.8 inch screen um, so I'm going to use that because the small one was a bit cramped and some of the longer answers and categories and things were getting cut off. So I think the your screen will fit nicely. Um, once I'm happy with the UI there, I also want to try to make a, a container or a box or, or find a box and figure out how to mount this stuff inside of it because I like to make a little self-contained handheld uh, device that's based on this like Pico W screen and the 1x4 uh, Neo key. And then the uh, last thing I did uh, yesterday is uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico W uh, inside of this industrial control button that I bought offline a while back. Um, and I've got this set up now to send signals into my PC uh, and then ultimately convert those signals into commands to send inside of a running Factorio server, which is a video game uh, that's running on the PC. And this is allowing me to control things inside the video game using these nice big chunky buttons uh, and the lock key and the, the panic button uh, that are on this controller I got. So the uh, first thing I did was uh, use it as a launch button for the rocket inside the game. That was a lot of fun. Um, and that's what I got. Thanks. OK, thank you. OK, next up is Jeff. Hi again. Um, so last week, I, I ended up with a big list for last week, so bear with me. I ported Doom to the ESP32 S3 Feather for a little gag video that Phil B made. There is a link to that YouTube in the notes doc. 
the bulk of the async I.O. fixes and improvements were merged, and so those are either um, out in the current beta, or out in the next beta, or out in uh, CIRCUP updates. I fixed an obscure hard fault when assigning the traceback property of a generator exit object. It turns out as a memory optimization, MicroPython and therefore CircuitPython keep one generator exit object around and throw it whenever a generator is told to stop. And this object is read only, so you can't assign its traceback property. Now you get a, pro a correct exception. Um, next up, I fixed a bug on the Pico W where the use of GPIO pins attached to the Wi Fi coprocessor could interfere with regular pins. And similarly, I fixed a bug where certain pins didn't work with PIO or other features that used PIO, such as pulse in. And again, those were both affecting the Pico W specifically. I implemented static network configuration on the Pico W. So if you need to work by setting your IPv4 address and your net mask and your DNS server and all those things manually, you can do that. I did a few tiny, tiny doc fixes, a few updates to the GitHub Actions build process of various Adafruit repos. GitHub has been uh, deprecating various features and where we use those features directly or where we can upgrade an action so that it doesn't use that feature indirectly, I've been making some PRs to do that. Um, I accepted multiple requests for USB PIDs in pidcodes.org, which I'm kind of the steward of while Scott is out. And I worked on a higher level wrapper for programs for Coproc, which is currently living in a personal GitHub repo. Link is in the notes doc. Um, but with the Coproc module, I've discovered that um, I'm seeing a lot of crashes in CircuitPython while halting the coprocessor. And that's been a little bit of a thorn in my side. And uh, so I'd like to get that fixed. So moving into this week, uh, my outlook is a little uncertain. My partner who lives with me tested positive for, for COVID yesterday after we had spent a lot of time in close contact. So it seems likely that I'm also gonna be sick soon. She's doing okay. Uh, and we have a good support network here in case we need something. So no need for you to worry about us. Uh, my goals and hopes, though, are to continue with Coproc, and I've been promising this for at least three or four weeks running, write the IBM PC keyboard adapter guide for the Learn system, and maybe squash some 800 bugs, but uh, the odds I will get to all of that are very low, and that's what's up here. Okay, thanks, Jeff, and I hope you either don't get sick or it's very brief. Okay, next up is Katni. Hello. So last week, I caught up from being out for two weeks. Um, towards the end of that, I kept thinking of, of work stuff I wanted to do, so but was totally unable to do it. So I added it to my to-do list. So the to-do list had a bunch of minor stuff uh, at the beginning for me to try and get through on Monday. There's still a bunch of it there, but um, I got through a lot of it. I finished up and put the LTR329, LTR303 guide into moderation. Um, that got me through Thursday, and then Friday I started the PCF8575 guide, and then noticed that I had gotten way behind on my guide feedback. Um, so I went through about 50 guide feedbacks, I'm still behind, but, um, I tried to get through all the stuff that I could do quickly. Um, so this week, update the Pico Circuit Python board definition to have stem I squared C singleton for use with Pi cowbells. Um, the PCF8575 guide, plan on trying to finish that up. I'm waiting on Eva to finish a series of PCB repos for various boards, and then I will be emailing the new products team to add to the related products pages. The boards don't necessarily need guides, but folks always want to see the schematic and board files for various things. So that way those are available, um, even though there's no guide. Uh, I have a bunch of miscellaneous. And then a huge list of other stuff, but thankfully I've been told to focus on one thing at a time, so the PCF guide comes first. Um, that uh, is not entirely true at the moment, I'm still focusing on one thing, but I did get the next thing I'm going to be doing, which is the guide for the Pi Cowbell, um, the Proto Pi Cowbell. So there's no code to go with that, but uh, we have a series of headers that work with it, so it will include pinouts and... Um, uh, a list of assembly instructions with each type of header so folks can um, know their options and get started with uh, their Pi Cowbell. And that's what I've got. Okay, thank you, Katni. 
And uh, next up is Paul Cutler. Thanks, Dan. I finished my 32 by 8 NeoPixel audio reactive project this week that I've been working on for the last couple months on and off. And then there's a new episode of The Bootloader out today where Toddbot talks a little bit about CircuitPython's Microlab and some more topics like code editors and 3D printing and a couple other things. Thanks. All right. Thank you. OK, then I, now I have two people who are text only. First, Tammy makes things. Uh, started work on an idea for using CircuitPython to control my Novation circuit Groovebox synth. This is going to require extending the Adafruit MIDI library to be able to generate MIDI and RPN uh, non-registered parameter number messages, so researching what those look like. On vacation for my birthday, so this week is going to be a bit chaotic. And then uh, next up, I'll read Tectrix contributions. Last week, mostly housework and the light, like excited to pick up more CircuitPython things again, keeping up with some PRs, working on unified CI actions for the CircuitPython libraries. And this week, starting a Pasteman helper library for dumping text using services like pasteman.com, which could be helpful for dumping error text or messages for applications where a screen or serial connection isn't wanted. Preparing for a very spooky community help desk on Halloween night, October 31st at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to go over PRs and anything else people come up with. I'll try to find non-Turing ca complete candy to snack on. Thanks, Jepler. That refers to the Zoom, uh, I mean the uh, Doom uh, candy bar video. And following through with a backlog of patches to the library, starting with unified composite actions. Focusing on making sure all the contributions for Oktoberfest are counted and going to try to give a preliminary review now so changes can be made before the deadline. Generally taking a look at everything on my to-do list from before moving and spin it all back up again. If I owe you something, please let me know. And that wraps up our status reports for today. Um, we'll move on to um, In the Weeds. I have a very minor thing to ask about. This week, I was just wondering whether people... Right now, the video for the weekly meeting shows... Um, uh, Discord. It shows the CircuitPython dev channel in Discord. And I was wondering if people thought it would be helpful. Whenever I run the meeting, I'm always scrolling the weekly meeting notes, obviously, because I have to read from them a lot. And I was wondering if, suppose we show Discord and the notes side by side in the video, would that be useful for people who are reviewing the meeting on YouTube? I don't, I'm not sure how readable it would be um, at that point because yeah, you're squishing two of them into the same screen. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I would say is uh, folks seem to love to click around and the tag uh, for each person's um, animal, you know, folks that aren't logged in, um, shows up and blocks the text a bunch. Um, I'm not sure it's necessary. We link to it and it's got timestamps. I think that's more important. Okay. Because I, I just feel like it, it doesn't help the podcast at all. And, you know, folks may be watching the, um, watching the video as well. But the, the first thing in the, in the YouTube notes is a link to the notes document. Right, so that's a good point. So they just, they just bring up the notes and follow the yeah. stamps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds reasonable. I won't. It's just more work, so <laughs> we don't have to do it. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, if there's no other in the weeds, uh, we'll we'll wrap up for this week. So um, next week is um, it, the meeting will be at the regular time on uh, Monday, uh, October thirty first. Today has been the Circuit Python Weekly for Monday, October 24th. Thank you, everyone who participated. Remember, if you want to support, support Adafruit and Circuit Python, and those of us who work on Circuit Python, consider, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting uh, will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. There will also be links to this meeting in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which is coming out tomorrow. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. 
And so they mentioned the next meeting will be next Monday. It's Halloween in the U.S. and most places if that celebrate Halloween, October 31st, 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, remember, the meeting is held on the for Discord. You can go to adafru.it slash discord. And if you want to be notified about the meeting, ask to be added to the at Science Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. So we hope to see or hear from all of you next week. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. I will stop recording.